Hello, AAMS. Welcome to our fifth annual Hippocrates Gala. This is really exciting. Here we are together at last. And the purpose of our meeting today is to bring celebration, light acknowledgement, and to buoy our community by acknowledging all of the efforts of so many of us who have persisted and with courage risen above uh, the grain. And with that, I'm so excited to welcome you to the Hippocrates Gala. We started this gala in 2015. It was our first gala. And there at the Biltmore Hotel, we came together with people from around the world. So we hope that you have your glass of champagne. And if you don't, you can have your kombucha. But what we really want to do is welcome you into this world. And if you're listening from afar on Facebook or in your in the group, it's been so much fun to get to know you. And we are excited to introduce our first award. Functional scientists is to help develop and employ evidence-based standards and methods to help treat sleep apnea in children. So my interest was in, okay, if we model now, so this if we model all three of them in the same population, what do we see? What is actually the most important learning? Consider the person as a whole to try to understand his problem or behavior by looking not only at his way of thinking, but at the big picture. Those layers glide in different ways to create variability in morphology, and I think this explains why frenulums look different. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Mark Richard Muller. I have the privilege of serving as the Executive Director of the AAMS, Academy of Applied Myofunctional Sciences, and co-chair of this fifth AAMS Hippocrates Gala. When we envisioned dreaming of a field of medicine in our grasp to help people around the world with clinical care that we knew was effective and scientific. We dreamed of this and we dreamed of telling our stories. And uh, it's fitting here today, I just wanna honor one of our uh, first uh, winners, um, Christian Gimeno. <clears throat> uh, we miss you and we love you. Uh, he was uh, uh, one of our founding members and advisory board members and a great guiding influence. And one of the first uh, award winners of our first gala of the AMS Hippocrates Award. So I want to uh, mention uh, that it's such a privilege to help tell the stories of these people. Some of them already established as giants in medicine, some perhaps unknown. But this next category of awards, the Rising Star Investigator Award, is just so exciting because these are people who show great promise in changing medicine. So it's a privilege to introduce uh, our first award winner, uh, Dr. Shannon Sullivan. It's been so great to become her friend over the last few years. She is a uh, pediatric pulmonologist and sleep specialist. And she is also uh, going down a path of starting a master's in epidemiology at Oxford. Uh, she's been in the orbit of Stanford School of Medicine for many years, and uh, it's a real privilege to be able to uh, introduce her and this award today. Thank you so much to Samantha <laughs> and Mark and all of you. Uh, this is really wonderful, and I think that the work of the AAMS is so meaningful, and it is such a pleasure to be here with all of you right now. I also want to um, thank Christian Gimeno. We do miss him so much. And he is the reason so many of us um, became interested um, in this space. And we have a lot of work to do. He was never afraid of a challenge. And I think that's, that's why we're all here today. 
I see Dr. Pirelli, Dr. Quo here, and I want to thank them as well for being such important influences for me. So thank you. Uh, this happens to be uh, Christian CG, you know, Christian Guimino's award from that first Hippocrates Gala. Um, Sharon Keenan was so kind and, and Stanford School of Medicine when uh, they were breaking down his office, uh, they made sure to deliver that uh, to me. So I'm happy to have it here with us today. Uh, our next uh, award winner is uh, Dr. Karen Spreut. I met her when she was at University of Chicago maybe seven, eight years ago. And we started talking at the International Pediatric Sleep Association Congress in Foz de Iguazu, Brazil, uh, uh, six years ago. And it's been such a wonderful journey to follow her career, to follow her lectures, her brilliance. Uh, she was recruited to the National Institute of Health for France, INSERM. And uh, we're really excited to have her engaged and is an AAMS board member and a personal uh, colleague as well. Uh, and we're looking forward to doing some exciting work with INSERM. Um, so uh, thank you for uh, your courage and brilliance, uh, Dr. Karen Sproit. We're honored to, to bestow this award on you today. So I'll drink to both of you because um, if you hear the word reimagine, I think both of you have made a reimagination of um, a conference. And most of all, I think you've brought myofunctional therapy in real life through bringing a smile to everybody's face throughout this conference. So we're all doing the myofunctional therapy uh, straight ahead throughout this whole month. Um, I'm very honored for this uh, award and I'm deeply honored for uh, your friendship. And indeed, it's been a long time, but my effort is there as fall in love with uh, children, sleeping children and how they develop. And I'm fully ready to move the field forward in terms of myofunctional therapy, sensor-motor development. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you so much. Um, this is really exciting. I get to drink champagne with you all, wherever you are, and I want to introduce our next awardee, Isabel Filiozat, whose work in promoting education uh, through her many books and understanding the bigger picture of child development um, is such a wonderful asset and something that I even am reading myself as a parent. And I just want to say thank you for jumping into this arena because you really did. And your work, uh, not just as a, an educator and a teacher, but you're really looking to elevate the experience and the development of children and their parents and the people who support them. And it's really an honor and a privilege that you're with us. So I want to say thank you. And on behalf of the AAMS, um, here's the award to you. Thank you. Well, th thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm very moved by your words, uh, Samantha. Thank you so much. I uh, dedicate this prize to Rémi Filioza, my father, who died from COVID this April. He underwent a lot of uh, parental violence in his childhood and as a psychologist devoted his life to teach tools to better communicate, respect one another and be happier together. So love and freedom were the words I was raised with. Uh, he also was very much invested in psychosomatic and helped people get better. He was aiming at health in the body, the heart and the spirit, and my work follows his path. And when you award me, you award his life. So I'm proud of what he did in his life. We didn't talk much about my discovery of an oral fascial myofunction, but you know, he would have loved it because it's about helping children, parents, families to get better and live more happily together. When a child cannot sleep, he is hyperactive, can't concentrate, parents may take him responsible for it. He is said to misbehave, uh, they may punish him, but all those problems could be symptoms due to m the many consequences of a tongue tie. So I'm engaged behind you, behind my father, to bring all this precious information about oral fascial neurofunction therapy 
to as many people as possible because I think it can relieve so many children and lessen the risk of parental violence. It can help to find uh, more love and freedom. Thank you. Thank you so much, Isabel. Uh, we really do appreciate your words and your compassion and empathy. And it's really wonderful that we can all celebrate the humanity. So thank you. The uh, next award winner is Nikki Mills. And if you haven't listened to her presentation, you uh, should run to it because she has brought another aspect of what we do in myofunctional sciences and through her work in looking at the lingual frenulum, she's really been on a path where we can all learn the anatomical conditions. And we are so grateful because the science is what we need and your perseverance and uh, the cadaver expedition that you undertake is really appreciated from our community and the people who receive the benefits. So to Nikki Mills, who's not here with us right now because it's probably three o'clock in the morning. We're celebrating you and thanking you for your contribution. present these two awards to amazing professionals. First of all, Stacy Quo, who I've known for many years. Um, she's been an orthodontist for many years. She taught, she is teaching at UCSF and she has for the past 26 years. And I really connect with her because it was because of the needs of her patients that she became uh, interested and involved in the treatment of sleep disorder breathing. And she started lecturing on this field in, uh, at Stanford Sleep Disorders Clinic in 1998 as an adjunct assistant clinical professor. She's lectured and published nationally and internationally on orthodontic biomechanics. Uh, I feel really honored to be able to present this award to Stacy, Dr. Stacy Quo. Uh, and well, I just want to say that um, my heart goes out to uh, all the work that you've done internationally. You helped me tremendously uh, when I spoke at the AAO meeting. I, I used your chapter, I referenced you. And uh, I'm honored to present this to you, Dr. Kuo. Thank you for this recognition. And I must say that there are definitely many more that deserve this acknowledgement. Uh, I want to thank you, Joy. You've been tireless in your efforts over the many, many decades. And you were and you continue to be an important influence to me. Um, one of the most meaningful collaborations of my professional career has been with Dr. Christian Gimeno. Um, we started working together in 1998. 1998, and my ideas have taken flight through his work and through the work of this organization. So thank you to AAOMS for your commitment to not only patient care, but to education of the public and to the allied health professions worldwide. So, a voltra sante. Thank you. I'm also very honored to give the next award to Dr. Camacho because he is my hero. And this uh, article that he wrote in 2015 was published. It was the light of my life. I use the study every day with patients. I'm honored to present this to you and uh, all the work you did with this uh, making a meta-analysis. Uh, it was 
early because there weren't enough papers okay. out of that. So I'm honored to present this to you, Dr. Camacho. In getting to know Matt Camacho, I heard about his landmark uh, meta-analysis on myofunctional therapy and obstructive sleep apnea. When it was a paper in development, Christian Gimeno told me about it back in like 2013, 2014. And I knew he was at Stanford and with a group of really bright people uh, reaching out, wanting to, to really kind of learn things. And I reached out to Mac and getting to know him over the last few years, it was so impactful to see this paper come out in sleep uh, in 2015. It's opened so many doors. But Mac Camacho, let me tell you, is one of the most humble, sincere guys. Uh, he keeps a, a foot in the door at Stanford and the VA Medical Center there um, in uh, Palo Alto. But he's based full time in Hawaii at Tripler. And he leads a team and I think leads a group of people around the world who are looking at helping our armed forces around the world. He's a tireless person looking to take care of soldiers, of their personal lives, of their work in the field and their families. And he, as a sideline almost, is this like Aristotle type character where he's searching for truth. He's looking at creating meta-analyses, investigating every aspect he can think of in terms of otolaryngology, sleep medicine, and somehow it seems like his investigations keep veering back to myofunctional therapy. Not only did he do the myofunctional therapy meta-analysis on uh, obstructive sleep apnea, but he did another one on snoring and so many other papers that touch this. And uh, it's been a privilege to get to know him over the years. And we look forward to supporting your team at Tripler and also in the armed forces uh, across the world. And we're really honored to have you here today and so excited to see your presentation, which is just coming in today. <laughs> so we'll feature it next week. Thank you, uh, Mac, uh, for your work and your leadership oh, yeah. and courage and vision. Well, thank you so much. I am uh, quite honored. Thank you, Mark, Samantha, uh, Joy, and I see Dr. Sullivan out there who helped train me. Hello. Um, so many legends here on the screen. I, I'm kind of uh, in awe, but uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, if you watch my video, you'll kind of see the story about uh, why I did the first paper. I'm a surgeon, so um, not the guy who's likely to support something like myofunctional therapy. But I, I always try to seek the truth when I do the systematic reviews, summarize the literature. And uh, I'm, I'm quite amazed, and I've seen it in my own patients, that it has worked so um, I'm definitely an advocate for myofunctional therapy and uh, with the paper Dr. Guillemino, who we all miss, um, he wrote one that looked at um, children who were followed over time and it improved their breathing, you know, years out when they were teenagers. And so that's proof to me that it has lasting effects and uh, just amazing. And thank you all again. I'm, I'm quite honored and humbled to uh, be here with you guys. And thank you for the award. I appreciate it. It's difficult for her to latch also. Yeah. So no wonder she's she prefers one side. Yeah. It's not you, it's her. Okay. It's my honor and privilege to award this amazing man with this Florence Nightingale Award. I met y'all many, many years ago, and he has not only a depth of compassion and character, but also novel thinking. And every time I've had a conversation with him, he has made me think in new directions and has pushed me to be a better version of what I do. And I am extremely honored to present Ayal Boter with the Florence Nightingale Award. Well deserved, Ayal. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much, Michelle. 
I'm really honored and many thanks to the AMS for acknowledging my work in the last 20 years. And let us hope that we can establish a new understanding of proper function and actually a new way of health promotion, just as Florence Nightingale did in the 1800s with nursing. We should have greater emphasis on preventing, starting from day one, and earlier embedding of this curriculum at the, for future physicians and dentists. And let us change the world one tongue at a time, as we said yesterday. Thank you very, very much. to give you information and strategies and exercises that you can be using for your your client and patient population both in terms of pediatrics and also the adult population so my background is that I've been involved with teaching breathing for about 20 years or so my name is Patrick Jones and growing up as a child in Ireland I had asthma and of course if you have asthma you don't just have asthma because inflammation of your lungs can travel up to your nose and vice versa. It is my honor and privilege and on behalf of the AAMS to award the Demateria Medica Award to Patrick McEwen. He is a very knowledgeable and prolific writer and teacher. Thank you so much, Patrick, and congratulations. Hello everybody, I think it's tremendous. There's so many faces that I know. And I think above all else is the progression in the awareness of nasal breathing and functional breathing. I never thought that it would ever happen. And I've been involved in this field for 20 years. And when meeting Joy Motor back, I would say maybe 10 years ago, was the first step to really bringing breathing into myofunctional therapy. So I would say definitely to Joy Motor as a pioneer in terms of the recognition of nasal breathing, but also the breathing exercises that we teach. Thank you. I would like to reach out to Dr. Bill Hang and of course, Professor John Mew, um, as again, their life's work and many of you also, because I think finally there is some awareness on this. Something is happening. And James Nestor's book has been very instrumental with that. I'm hoping that the trend will grow and I believe it will. So thank you all for your dedicated help and support over the years. And especially to Mark and Samantha who have organized this and brought all of us together. Thank you. Here's my daughter on her fourth sleep study. Um, I was also diagnosed with, with obstructive sleep apnea. Um, so I am my own lab. <laughs> and I wanna thank the American taxpayers for funding my T32 through the NIH. Denise, it is such a joy to have you here with us and what you've done in such a short time from your own personal journey has really touched so many of us. Um, the presentation you gave really showed the story between you and your daughter and the challenge that you have been able to overcome and persevere and it's a true honor to present an award that was actually created for you for overcoming and creating and with your perseverance, curious mind, and your willingness to share, you've really elevated our community. And we're so honored from the AAMS to honor you with the Chrysalis Award. Oh, thank you so much, Samantha. I'm very honored to be receiving this Chrysalis Award. And I'd like to thank my nominators in the selection committee as well. Um, and I'm so honored to be receiving it at the beginning of my research career. So I'm just getting started. I haven't contributed a significant amount to the literature, but what I have done, I've been trying to get together all of these different disciplines from sleep medicine, dentistry, 
anatomy, paleontology, physical therapy, lactation, speech therapy, trying to bring everything together so that we can more clearly visualize this elephant in the room that we all can sense, but it's been so hard to, to show the rest of the world. And ev using evolution as a tool to understand the functioning of the airway has proved particularly fruitful in establishing the basic science, something that Christian Guillemino so implored us to strive for. So I'm grateful for the enthusiasm that you've shared um, and there's a lot more to come. Um, I just like to thank all those people who have, whose work has led me to this point, um, seemingly too many individuals to name. We all need each other and every piece of the puzzle helps us see more clearly. And so there's some standouts that are so, I so much would like to thank. One is Dr. Kingman Stroll, my mentor at Case. And then also you all, Joy Muller, Mark Muller, Samantha Weaver, who made this possible. When I was down on my luck, you made sure I could take this introductory myofunctional therapy course when I couldn't afford it. And you made an investment in me. Thank you so much. Before prosthesis installation, the speech therapist must provide sensorial interal adaptation as well as muscle organization to prepare the stomatognetic system to receive the new dentures. It is such an exciting treat for me to introduce our next award winner. The Award is the Madame Marie Curie Award for lifetime achievement in advancing medicine through science that touches myofunctional therapy. And for this award to go to someone who's so young, so really early in her career, about 10 years ago, I, we met in uh, an early myofunctional therapy conference in Northeastern Brazil. And we were so excited to talk to each other. You know, I was kind of brushing up on my Portuguese. She was brushing up on her English, but we managed to communicate through science. And we <laughs> were so excited. We made a toast and a pact right then and there that we were gonna work to change medicine through myofunctional therapy. And so here we are today through this virtual means, fast forwarding, I uh, went to her PhD defense nine years ago, I think it was, or eight years ago, University of Sao Paulo Bauru, which is one of the top surgical centers, dental schools, or facial pain schools in the entire world. And uh, I, I was really privileged to be invited to her PhD thesis defense. And uh, it's been wonderful uh, getting to know her and become her friend over the years. And we're so excited to share her work on the world stage here. She has three presentations and she has on the 28th, a half day workshop in our Congress. So really groundbreaking stuff, myofunctional therapy and prosthodontics, myofunctional therapy and orthopedic surgery. And you know, her validated tool, one of just two really medically validated intake tools for myofunctional therapy screening. That's uh, the, the basis of her workshop on the 28th. But Jedra Berachin Felix, uh, thank you for your work and your leadership. And it's such a privilege to bestow this award to you. Cheers. I am very, very happy to be awarded here. It's a great achievement. I would like to dedicate this special moment to important people who have set examples for me, my mentors, Dr. Katia Genaro, Dr. Claudia Maria de Felicio, and Dr. Irene Marquesan. I hope that my dedication to studying and researching in the orofacial myofunctional area will contribute to the clinical practice based on evidence and to improvement of the patient's quality of life. 
I'd like to say thank to the AMS, to the Baldwin School of Dentistry, University of São Paulo, for all the opportunities in my career. Since an undergraduate student until accomplishing the professor position right now. Many, many thanks. Giving a child a beautiful smile was a gift from God. Helping a child to breathe is an even greater gift, which gives me a lot of joy. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I hope you can hear me. So it's my privilege to start today with uh, Dr. Paola Pirelli and she's going to receive the Irene Marquesan Award named after one of my mentors and for a lifetime achievement uh, in an institutional advancement of medicine through myofunctional therapy. I met uh, Dr. Pirelli uh, the first time that the AAMS had a congress in Rome and I, I remember her in particular while we were having a strategy meeting and um, up to that point, I was not very familiar with her, but then her name kept coming out and coming out. And I realized that she has been really a pioneer, almost like a quiet pioneer. Um, you know, uh, she came out in a lot of um, uh, meta studies and uh, in, in a lot of anal um, systematic analysis because she really did a pioneer work in terms of uh, the rapid uh, maxillary expansion. But what was interesting is that she did um, histological studies on, on this expansion. And also, unlike previous uh, decades in which the expansion was thought in terms of just realigning teeth, she was actually thinking in terms of breathing. And now we know how breathing is important. So um, as I said, uh, it's, it's very easy to work on top of what our pioneers have been doing, and she's one of them. Uh, she was uh, privileged to work with um, Christ uh, Christian Gimino and other uh, great people in, in science and research with Professor Gianelli. Um, with uh, the, uh, Professor Dallaire. So uh, it's my, uh, it's with gratitude, really, that I'm presenting the um, Irene Marquesan Award to Dr. Paola Pirelli. Thank you, Paola. Dear Licia, thanks. Thank you very much for your introduction. And first of all, I'd like to thank the organizing committee, Katrina Rogers, Mark Muller, Samantha Weaver, for this amazing Congress, which brought together many related specialties under the ages of myofunctional therapy. I'd like to dedicate this important award to my teachers, to Christian Gemino, I miss him very much, to my little patients, my parents, my family, and especially to my son, Fabio Massimo who, due to my commitment in the clinic and research, had a part-time mother. He was with me during the important international conferences that gave resonance to my research. His presence was fundamental for me. So, thanks, all of you.
It is such a, an honor to be able to present this next award. When we created the Centers of Light Award, we wanted to spotlight interdisciplinary leadership. And uh, whether it be in a university setting, a hospital setting, or a clinical setting. And uh, we've had some extraordinary winners in the past, but this one is really very special to me. A few years ago, um, I, as, as you heard from when I, I discussed uh, going to the PhD thesis defense from Gilbert Chin Felix like nine years ago in Bauru. By the way, they have a great sandwich. Uh, the ba it's called the Bauru, uh, but uh, in the city of Bauru. They're, pr they're proud of their sandwiches. Uh, every region in Brazil has its own great specialty. Um, but uh, being a, a speaker and a, a part of the, the group at Abramo at the university there, Abramo stands for Associação Brasileira de Motricidade Orofacial, uh, you know, the Brazilian Myofunctional Therapy Association. So I'm going to give a shout out, yo, Abramo! <clears throat> um, uh, but there was a, a private tour organized for Centrino, and we got to meet with people. There were people speaking in the Congress. And this is really, as far as I can tell, the leading craniofacial surgical center for children in the world. Uh, extraordinary team, cleft palate surgery, um, you know, Pierre Robin, Serge Weber, uh, really all of the craniofacial anomalies. And what is so extraordinary, these surgeons are lecturing around the world. People are coming from the top surgical centers in the world to come do residencies there. But what is so extraordinary for us, for the AMS, is that they apply myofunctional therapy principles for their patient population. Of course, it makes sense. If some child has a cleft palate, the tongue is gonna go into the cleft. Why not rehabilitate that patient with myofunctional therapy in addition to the surgery to help support the results? They have uh, something on the order of 100 specialty clinicians working there. And I think they've got somewhere between like 18 and 20 myofunctional therapists. So it's an extraordinary center. I can't wait for us as a society to get our webpage up for this Hippocrates Gala to celebrate and tell the stories of our centers and leaders in a greater way in a documentary film format. But uh, Centrino, thank you for your vision and leadership, University of Sao Paulo, Bauru. And I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Carlos Santos, who's the director of the center, if he would like to say hello and say a few words. I respectfully greet all the participants in this prestigious event. I am honored to accept this award on the behalf of our Hospital for Rehabilitation of Craniofacial Anomalies, Centrino. University of Sao Paulo. As a public institution, we are proud to provide our patients with the best care, absolutely free of charges to patients from all over Brazil. As the current superintendent, it is time to thank the AAM, AAMS, especially Mark Muller, for kindly recognizing the serious work we have been doing, and also to acknowledge the past superintendents and all the staff students, residents, researchers, and other collaborators. Finally, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to the families who believed in us to treat their children. Our more than 120,000 patients registered over the last 53 years of existence for the re rehabilitation of cleft lip and palate craniofacial malformations, and hearing impairment. Thank you very much for your attention. This is really about oxygen delivery. It's about the formation of all the competencies in the human animal that we developed over evolution 
but are being uh, instructed now in the modern environment. So I'm going to present my overview of this, both from a, a philosophical point of view, uh, the premise of airway orthodontics, and also from a treatment, uh, treatment point of view. Barry, it is truly an uh, honor and it makes me a little choked up to say thank you for your collaboration. You've always been that way um, ever since I met you about 10 years ago and your persistence and ingenuity and you're always willing to bring people in with your center and educators and you have just so many talents and the fact that kids can receive these gifts from you is just a very special thing so on behalf of the aams we are truly honored to present you the collaboration cures award well i've been on this for some time I always feel that my practice lives up the ideals that were uh, just after I gave my presentation yesterday I had received an email from a dentist who had brought her son to me it's a sleep apnea but it was now dissatisfied with what I was doing and she's taking him to another better airway orthodontist maybe my ego is too frail but when my outcomes don't match my ideals it's heartening and humbling. But the truth is we have taken all a daunting task. We are breaking ground and we don't have all the information we need. Yes, we need to do it there and collaboration is key. But after hearing Sprite's lecture yesterday and after working with a teacher and partner eight years, Mark Cruz, who Frank deserves more than half this award, by the way. I realized that I had left out the most important of my presentation. And that is our next task, now that we know what the problem is, is to measure it, not only in our assessments, but in our outcomes. Qualitative and quantitative measures of improvements of breathing, facial growth must start to you. Saying that we're making children's lives better is not enough. We need to prove it. Thanks to Samantha and Mark and all of you who are on journey with me. Thanks to Howie Hinden and Michael Gelb of the AAPM for coining the term collaboration cues. Thanks to my wife Lisa, who has dubbed my efforts Bar the World of Mouth Breathing. And thanks especially to John Mew. A luminary is one who lights the way for others, and John have done that for all of us. Collaborative involvement from myofunctional therapists, from ENTs, work through the primary care physician, the pediatrician. And that's another way to impart to primary care physicians that dentists do more than fill cavities. If I engage a child's pediatrician, look, how about referring this child um, to a, an ENT? Who do you like? They love it. They love being respected. And it's like, oh my God, I didn't know Boyd knew anything besides how to fill teeth. Uh, it is my mm, extreme privilege to give this um, Albert Schweitzer uh, Lifetime Achievement Award for Reverence of Life to Kevin Boyd. And you can read all about his achievements in life. I just want to tell you a couple of things about him. They're more personal. Thing number one, I remember the first time I met him, uh, I was given a course with Joy um, in Chicago my first time. And when I heard that he, he would be in attendance, I kind of froze because to me he was like a, a, like a giant and I was afraid, oh my God, what if I say something wrong? But he, he was so approachable and uh, somehow we established a connection. And what I like about him is that 
he's not necessarily someone who teaches, he's someone who inspires. So um, uh, another thing that I liked about him is that, I don't know if you noticed, but when he talks to you and he talks about something he likes, his eyes go very big. So believe it or not, he came and spent some time in my hometown in Italy. Uh, and the reason is because during some restoration work, um, we found some skeletons under the kitchen floor. And so I told him, why don't you come and, and uh, analyze the, the skulls of these uh, skeletons? And he was very happy. So uh, with my sister, I went to pick him up at the airport. And she said, how does he look? And he said, it's a guy that looks like he's so happy to see you. He's going to have big eyes. And surely enough... I mean, his expression was just so, he's so enthusiastic and he's so enthusiastic for everything he does. He inspires and his way of seeing uh, um, how we are evolving from the past to the future, his passion, his love for his patients. I saw him working with his patient was just astounding. So I consider him not just one of my mentors, one person that inspires me and a very dear friend. And yes, Kevin, you can come back and have a beer at my farm anytime, okay? And we can listen to the Beatles until the cows come home. So <laughs> my pleasure, Kevin, uh, to award you this uh, um, award. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia, for that generous introduction, loving, generous introduction. Um, I want to accept this award on behalf of my support staff. Uh, that, that's why Alicia was able to witness some amazing things in my practices, my support staff, and that, that helped me and my partner, Janet, really help these children feel safe, loved, and empowered, e even while they're still suffering. I mean, you know, we don't, uh, that's the first thing we have to do is, is help the parents uh, with the, the care uh, to understand that this is what we are going to do our best to do. No promises, but we do our best. I also want to accept the award on behalf of my fellow awardees uh, that are here at this banquet um, and also fellow panelists and presenters in the Congress and really all of you in attendance, all of you who have registered for this conference, you all have reverence for life or you wouldn't be here. Um, anything we can do, all our efforts collectively and individually to assure optimal airway and overall health as soon as life is possible. This makes you all uh, Albert Schweitzer Award recipients uh, in my view. Thank you. Thank you again, Mark and uh, Samantha for, for, uh, and Katrina, all you guys did to make this happen. I'm so grateful. What we see is that this principle of rhythmic integration is one of the most primitive yet dynamic and infinitely scalable in the foundation of living, perpetually evolving and resilient beings. Dr. Nordstrom, it's, uh, it's really special that I get to award you with this because about 10 years ago, uh, you invited Mark into a workshop and he came back with a book that you had given to him and it was uh, Leonardo da Vinci. And he was very inspired by that. And having come from a background of art and going into science and feeling a little bit out of my league, it was really cool to see how your science and art is interwoven in everything you do. And what I also want to say is that your innovation has helped many people and including my family. So I just want to say thank you for what you do. Thank you for your persistence and going out there, going against the grain and doing everything you can to support the life of others. Thank you. Hi. 
right. Thank you, Samantha and Mark. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, putting up with uh, the Nordstrom part of Nordstrom. But um, I, I just want to uh, thank Joy. Uh, we have a long relationship and it's now 40 years. And uh, it's been 40 years since uh, the connection and through Joy also finding Bill Zikifus, who was the first malfunctional therapist to work in my office and transformed my view about uh, orthodontics and, and the future of what's possible with children. Finding solutions, the question was, can we do something better? And we looked at uh, these luminaries, John Mew, uh, Henri Petit, who I spent time with, Fra Frankel, uh, Viola Freiman, in, in asking the question, if the question isn't asked, there's not gonna be the answer of, can we do something better? Can we improve on what we have? for the sake of the children. Finally, I'd just like to thank this one a precious person to me, Bjorn Nordstrom, who was the head of the Nobel Prize Committee for Medical Innovation until, um, a little bit before he passed away. But he was a pioneer in, um, it was in medical radiology, uh, interventional, but um, it was through his persistence that um, uh, a number of things got changed as far as the future of um, um, what we understand in, in, as far as cancer care. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Da Vinci said, I wish to do miracles. And um, that's my desire in the field of my functional therapy. As we're running up to the close of our awards today, I wanted to take a moment and say that I really hope everyone looks at our uh, gala program, which will be out sometime in the coming week. Uh, as, as you know, this is uh, Congress reimagined and we're building layers and we have such a wonderful support team. I wanted to take a moment and thank uh, Ren Kwan, who's been such a fearless director and editor and filmmaker. Ren, can you put your face on camera? Come around for one second. Come on, please. Just Victor's here. Uh, Sal Rodas, who's been so extraordinary. Katrina Rogers, who's been such a wonderful Congress secretary. And my gala co-chair, Samantha Weaver, who is uh, my wife. wife and partner and is such a playmate and you know, wonderful, loving mother of our two children. And uh, she's been such a dream to help bring all of your collective stories and work to uh, this uh, format. And as we're moving into our top uh, awards here, I also want to thank our sponsors. Uh, we just have a few key sponsors. And I'll take my uh, volunteer night job hat off of the AMS and, and put my day job hat. Uh, our institute, the Academy of Orofacial Myofunctional Therapy is an underwriting sponsor of this gala and this Congress. So uh, I guess, you know, thank you to the community out there of the AOMT and um, you know, come take a look at uh, our virtual exhibit hall, which is going to open next week for all of our exhibitors and sponsors. But I also want to thank Amy Ludeman Lazar, who's been so extraordinary, and she sponsored the Leonardo da Vinci Award for Vision and Invention uh, for Dr. Derek Nordstrom. And uh, Amy has been such a, a passionate supporter. I want to thank you for several years of such generous support for this uh, scientific society. And I also want to thank the International Pediatric Sleep Association, whose Congress was to be in Brisbane, Australia uh, in October, but has been moved to a virtual format in February. We look forward as a society and, uh, you know, also a big bunch of us there presenting there. It'd be a very exciting meeting. So please go to pedsleep.org, P-E-D-S-L-E-E-P.org. And uh, also a great partner in our Congress and for several years, the World Sleep Society has like picked us up as a little baby and helped nurture and carry us. And uh, we're so proud to be able to announce that our sixth AMS Congress will be held in conjunction 
with the World Sleep Congress, uh, which is tentatively scheduled for September of 2021 in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, I hear some gossip, don't quote me on this, uh, but uh, there may be a push to move it to March of 2022. So stay tuned and we will be involved. And we are so honored to have our sixth AMS Congress uh, in conjunction with the World Sleep Congress. And which brings us to Takashi Ono, our next award, the Hippocrates Award for Lifetime Achievement in the Advancement of Medicine that Touches Myofunctional Therapy. My name is Takashi Ono from the Department of Orthodontic Science, Tokyo Medical and Dental University, or you refer to TMDU. Cardiovascular consequences, systemic inflammation, and growth impairment. Growth impairment includes weight and height reduction and lower secretion level of growth hormones. It's been so lovely getting to know Takashi over the last few years. He came uh, over to give his presentation, flew in, flew out of uh, Vancouver from Tokyo, uh, September last year at the last World Sleep Congress. Dr. Ono is chair of the World Sleep Congress right now, which is gonna be coming up in the very near future, which did a very recent pivot to being in a virtual format. So uh, what would have been 20 or 30,000 people is now gonna be 15,000 or so virtually. Uh, I'm sorry, I won't be in Yokohama to celebrate it with you, but uh, he regrets uh, he wasn't able. It's the middle of the night in Tokyo and he has uh, some emergency uh, meetings around planning, but he gave an extraordinary keynote presentation at uh, this very Congress and I see it as a love letter to myofunctional therapy. He gets about 35 PhDs a year in orthodontics. Uh, he's celebrated at a very young age with a Lifetime Achievement Award at the American Association of Orthodontics, the International Association for Dental Research. I think far and away, he's the top orthodontic researcher in the world. So it's a privilege for us to be able to give him the Hippocrates Award for Lifetime Achievement in Advancing yeah. Medicine. went to school where I was taught that expansion was absolutely out. You shouldn't expand at all. In fact, I got into big trouble because I expanded. Didn't really make sense, but there we are. Um, so I wanted to find out the truth. So after my father died, I studied his records very carefully. And I discovered that he had expanded yours. And as I'd been taught at school, many of them would relapse. But mostly they only relapsed halfway, and I couldn't really understand why people felt um, it was a total waste of time when they got half the expansion they wanted. But some of them didn't expand, uh, relapse. Now, that surprised me. But what really um, changed my mind was that some of them went on and got wider after the expansion had completed. John Mew was uh, recently featured in a New York Times magazine, which includes words from a prominent American orthodontist stating that John Mew is an idiot. Why would this group want to honor someone described by another professional as an idiot? When one professional publicly refers to another in such terms, what does that really mean? From my perspective, those words say volumes about the person uttering them and only strengthen the case for the target of those words. I can assure you that John's personal response would be a polite 
and delivered in his proper British accent. He would gently smile and invite the accuser to explain in more detail the reasons for the statement. He would enjoy a lively debate on facts, but none of his detractors will dare engage him. They all know deep inside they cannot win the debate. Calling him names is easier. In the early 1980s, I decided the traditional orthodontic training I received had no basis in science and produced faces that were frequently less balanced than prior to treatment. I embarked on a CE program with course after course for about nine years before I finally met John. I flew from Vermont to Newport Beach, California to hear him. After the very first break, I called my wife to tell her that I couldn't believe the faces he was producing and tell her we had to go to London in October for me to learn more. His ideas were the first ideas that made any sense to me. It was all finally coming together. When I got to his office in London, I interviewed the parents in his waiting room and saw the faces of his patients. The parents were thrilled with the results and I was amazed at what he could do. He was light years ahead of what I'd learned and, I'd, and I've spent the last 30 years trying to catch up. John has made a lifetime of asking why and probably frustrated his teachers in the process. This curiosity helped him develop the tropic premise and what he believed proper restoral posture is. No person in the profession has successfully challenged this premise. They would rather call him an idiot. His orthotropic approach clearly produces the best looking faces. He's challenged many orthodontists to produce faces better than his, and no one has ever taken his challenge. We uh, now know that the best looking faces have more forward development and consequently generally have better airways. So those with better airways have better immune systems and will have decreased chances of getting sick from any virus. In the current environment, we find ourselves, this is a big deal. If you've been on the internet to see the faces of many who have died from the COVID-19 virus, you will agree with me. He has helped the world understand that children must achieve proper restoral posture to optimize their genetically determined growth potential. He's brought the orthodontic profession from aligning teeth to building better faces and being closer to an actual healthcare service rather than something merely cosmetic. Sadly, most of the profession knows nothing about this. He has enabled those of us who believe in his teachings to help countless people all over the world. As I was literally reading the New York Times Magazine article yesterday morning before work, the phone rang. A woman from Pennsylvania was on the line crying about the retractive orthodontic treatment she'd received, how she hated the result, and how she was suicidal. I told her that she could be helped and try to calm her down. John is on a campaign to stop retractive orthotics, and I'm happy to help him since that is a passion of mine. John's reward in the orthotic profession has been to, to be vilified by many. He lost his license to practice. He still has a smile on his face and, may, and marches on because that is who he is and what he does. He maintains a positive attitude and will not give up despite paddling upstream his entire life. He's all over Facebook trying to ch change things for the better, helping people wherever they are. He's raced Formula One cars and crashed one, taught sailing, written a book about behavior of dogs in a pack, lives in a castle with a moat and drawbridge of his own making, and bungee jumped at age 72. He main maintains a very positive attitude even when his back hurts and he can barely move. I can't thank this idiot enough for mentoring me and countless others over the years. Many have said he deserves a Nobel Prize, and I agree. It is my pleasure to give John Yu the Hippocrates Award. I don't feel I deserve an award. I just done what I enjoy. Um, I'm, as you have said, I'm still enjoying it, despite the fact that I'm not allowed to put my fingers in anyone's mouth these days. I looked up in a dictionary the other day um, what a dentist is. And do you know what um, the definition of dentistry is? It's just a simple definition. What dentists do. So it really doesn't leave me very wise as to what I'm not supposed to do. And I'm certainly continuing to advise people on how to look after themselves. And as you mentioned kindly, um, the Facebook site is an excellent way to do that. There are so many people who need trouble, they need your uh, need help. And you're the best people to help them, as I've often said. 
you can do much for them more than orthodontists can. And um, orthodontists can move their teeth, but you can cure their malocclusion. I can remember at the tender age of 15, walking along the road and thinking to myself that people who had open mouths looked a bit stupid. And I thought, well, maybe I looked stupid, so I'll try and keep my mouth shut. And it was a bit too late, but I'm sure it helped. And I managed to get the message through to most of my patients. And um, I, it's so nice to me to think that all of you are giving that same message. That, in my mind, is the most important message. You know, the tongue and the lips are important too. It is keeping your mouth closed that really controls your growth. And that is a message which I tried to spread in my I'm talking now of 1960 when I was trying to spread this well and um, long before almost any of you were around um, at that time I found there was very little interest in changing oral posture I don't know why I ran a meeting I sent information to all the speech therapists in the United Kingdom. Not one of them turned up. Anyway, it's lovely for me to see you there today, so involved in all uh, biology, functional, whatever you call it. There are so many different names. Um, but I can remember, I see Joyce smiling there. Um, I can remember meeting you all those years ago. Anyway, I think I've said enough. I, I should add a bit to Samantha. She was unbelievable. I'm sure you compose all those little videos that we've seen. That must have taken you a lot of work. And Mark, you've done sterling work. Well. well done, all of you. So I'll say goodbye. <laughs> John, we would all like to raise a glass to you for everything you have done Gallery. for our world and our understanding and the AAMS is so honored that you're here with us today. Here's to you, John Mew. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you again. This is really fun to be able to share all our talents with each other, stories, and I do want to take another moment to acknowledge somebody who also has been so influenced and guided by all of us here, John Mew, Bill Hang, and many others. It is Barbara Green. And Barbara, I want to say a few words because you have been doing myofunctional therapy longer than anybody I know. I think you started in the uh, around the time I was born, so I don't want to date myself, but uh, we're going into the 40, almost 50 year mark here. So Barbara, you received the Florence Nightingale Award 2017 in Chicago. We didn't have the opportunity to give you that award on that particular date in Chicago. So I wanna say thank you. And here's another opportunity to give you that award for all you do for patients as a clinician, as somebody who really cares about function and behavior as a myofunctional therapist. So thank you, Barbara. And I just wanna say we're all grateful for what you do as well. Thank you so much. This morning, it was so exciting to open my daily word and see that the word for today is legacy. I stand upon the shoulders of those who came before me and further their legacy by sharing their understanding and their vision. And that's what we're all doing. And now all of you, and I love all of the young faces because you're carrying this forward and Joy and I are just jumping for joy <laughs> because it was so much of our passion to see this happen. And we honor 
Samantha and Mark for putting so much of their time in to make this happen. And it, I, I just feel like I'm part of that legacy and it's exciting to have people like Garlander and Barrett and Zigafoos and Dr. Fryman and Dr. Mew and Dr. Hang and uh, Leecha and Joy working with me in teaching. It's been a beautiful, beautiful trip. And I'm so happy that it's going to get better and better and better. And children are going to be so blessed because of all of your efforts. Thank you. Like the Oscars, we're uh, six minutes over. So thank you for your patience. And, uh, you know, before the music uh, rises up and cuts me off, I want to thank everyone involved in helping patients. We're, we're really driven to, we're crazy dreamers. We want to help humanity. We want to make sure that every patient who suffers can find care and treatment. And we want to do our best to make sure that we can prevent these orofacial myofunctional disorders. At our founding meeting in Chicago in 2014 and our first scientific meeting in Rome in June of 2016, we presented our first real work, our poster, orofacial myofunctional disorders, which has stood for six years now as a, a document and we want to prevent these in in everyone we can so uh please join us in about 25 oh no i'm sorry 23 minutes now for a patient forum on this same bat channel patient voices because we are actually i'm announcing here forming a patient organization an international patient organization to help provide research portals for patients to log on get scans we're going to leverage technology we want to talk to journalists we want to talk to governments we want to talk to foundations we want to change medicine so join us in 22 minutes now and join us tomorrow for an amazing forum on sleep and myofunctional therapy where we will drive a white paper with some of the leaders of uh, this gala who will be who have been awarded today and leaders of the world sleep society and leaders in sleep medicine like mayor krieger villa z and join us on monday for another forum on breath and breathing have we reached a tipping point i think we may have maybe stay tuned so i will see you soon and tell everyone you can to join the congress you can see presentations until october 1st oh my god just for 330 dollars what and then all of this 120 plus presentations but if you're an ams member it only costs 200 dollars us until december 31st you get everything and more and more and more and more Join us. Get everyone in their monkey's uncle. Cheers to all the winners. Here, here. Everyone, cheers. Yay. Yay. Sound now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Congratulations. Everyone, congratulations to all the awardees. Congratulations, award winners. Congratulations. 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 Congratulations, Kevin. Thank you all.